Thank you for joining us today on the IPAC CRM webinar. What I'd like to do, first of all, is give you a general overview of the new IPAC CRM Class 5 user interface, uh, how intuitive it is, how easy it is to use, and then we're actually going to walk through a real-world scenario and a business uh, a process, and I'll turn into that in just a minute. But what I'd like to start with is the actual CRM product user interface here, a little more comfortable um, as I walk through uh, the, uh, the demonstration as a whole. So, beginning on the left-hand side, we have the main menu. And what the main menu will do is obviously take us to our different features and functions within ACPAC CRM. So that's searching for companies, solutions for the knowledge base, support cases, opportunities, leads, entering in new companies, persons, etc. My CRM, which is the page you're actually on now. Team selling or team CRM allows people to view information not just in an individual format, but in a group format. So support groups, level one, level two, level three support, field sales, inside sales, etc. Marketing automation. The administrative functions, our built-in reporting engine, our offline synchronization utility, all of those are accessed through the main menu. Just above the main menu, we have the back and forward arrows. And these are just like the back and forward arrows on your browser. They allow you to go back and forward through pages you've recently visited. So again, if I just want to go back four pages, I just click back four times. I don't have to search for persons again. I don't have to search for companies, opportunities. Whatever I was working on resides there. The recent drop-down list is also very similar. As you'll notice here, it stores recent support cases, companies, leads, opportunities, persons, and even knowledge-based solutions that I have visited. So I can go back to this information without having to type in information to search or advanced search or anything like that. It really shortens our transaction time. The top here we have what we call the context menu, and what the context menu will always do is explain to you exactly where you are in the solution. So you can see here now we are in my CRM for Peter Johnson. Now whether we're in a company or a person or an opportunity, the context menu will change to reflect that, making it to navigate and allowing people to always understand where they are in the system. Just below that you'll see a series of tabs, and these tabs obviously maintain different types of information depending on where we are in the context menu. So we're going to get into the tabs in more detail as we walk through the system. The main body page, the calendar in this case, is an active server page. And what I mean by that is, is that this is a 100% web-based product. It has to be accessed through an Internet Explorer browser. It has to be accessed over the web unless you're using our offline synchronization utility. So every screen you see, every drop-down list you see, is customizable by you. And that's very important moving forward because we understand that no CRM solution goes in vanilla. But you can see here, this is a calendar in a monthly format, the ability to hover over the information, and it will give me details of that appointment. Now, if I prefer to see my calendar in a daily, weekly, monthly, or annual view, obviously I have the opportunity to do so. On the right-hand side, we have filter criteria. So at this point in time, you can see I'm only looking at my pending appointments and tasks. Well, if I wanted to filter down and just look at the faxes I need to make out that are still pending, I can do that and apply the filter, and you can see it will just bring up that information. Okay. So why is this important? Again, it allows me to drill down to details and the data that's important for me to get my job done quickly. If I search for an email that I just sent out, it's that easy to find. Okay. If I want to review my information in a list view rather than the calendar view you see here, I select list. Below that, I have task and appointment buttons, the ability for me to create appointments in the CRM system for myself or other users. And just like most calendaring, task scheduling software, I have the ability to set a time to date, stamp those, set reminders. The ability for me to review not only CRM calendars, but also exchange calendars. So if I have some people on exchange, some people on CRM, I have the ability to set appointments and review the calendar 
with an access CRM. Below the, below the new appointment button, you'll see an email address, and you're going to see this throughout the CRM solution. And basically what this is is a built-in email editor. So the ability for me to launch and send emails from anywhere in the CRM solution specific to a person or in general as we have here. And I'm going to get into email management in much more detail in the webinar. Below that, we have our online help and our document drop. So much like the email, you're going to see the document drop exist everywhere, whether it's within knowledge-based solutions or support cases or opportunities or persons or companies. What it is is basically the ability for you to take any file, and don't limit it to documents, but any file and store it in the CRM system. Scroll over here. And what's important is that you're not only pulling that information from your local hard drive, so our company can pull templates for proposals and templates for white papers, etc., from one central folder on our main server so everybody's using consistent documents. Very critical. So let's take an overview of the user interface of ACTAC CRM. What I would like to do now is, is I'd like to log off. And we're going to go through a relatively real-world scenario as it applies to a company called Panoply Technologies. And we're going to walk through from marketing to sales to after the sales support and then some administrative functions. But I want to walk through the stages and specifically the workflows, the navigation of the product as it applies to everyone in your enterprise. Now, I understand that a lot of people that will be watching this webinar don't sell software. But you do sell some type of product, you do sell some type of services, and you support your clients. So again, although the product may not be specific to you, the CRM solution itself can easily be molded to your specific needs. So right now I'd like to log in as one of our marketing employees. And the first thing that we're going to note here is that everybody that logs in logs into a different screen. User preferences within the CRM solution allow individuals to set up the product the way they prefer to work. And I'll get into that in a little more detail. Uh, but this time I'm going to select marketing automation. What we want to do now is generate and distribute some leads for our salespeople. So the first thing to do that is we're going to create a target list. So I'm going to go to the target list tab and select that. And you can see here we have a list of existing company, person, or product lists for us to reuse, to filter by, or we can create a new one, which is what I'm going to do now. So let's generate a list of trade show leads that we've imported by state. And I want to send this to individuals, not to overall companies or product target lists. And now from here, it's basically point and click, okay? List management, very easy to use. So since we're going to create a mailer and send out some marketing collateral to the people on this list, let's get address one, highlight, and add that to target contents. Scroll down here a little bit. We will need city. We will need country. We will need zip code. And we will need state. And these are all going to come up as columns on my list that I generate. Now, since we want to search by state, which was uh, so put in the name up there, I'm going to also add state to the search criteria by selecting that button. So you can understand that any of the fields that exist in this select column can also be searched by. So you can make this extremely finite, get very detailed in the list that you want to capture. Now, I'm going to scroll down here and just add customer first name and customer last name. And then the source. How did we capture this information originally? So again, we want trade show leads, right? Website leads, maybe personal visits. And I added that to the search criteria and to the target contents. And let's select continue. So now what's it asking? Now it's asking me for that search criteria that we predefined, right? So let's actually do state, and we'll say equal to. And we'll pull up all of the customers in uh, the state of Massachusetts. I could select by phone call, by email. This is how they first contacted us, by website, by trade show, or I can pull everyone. 
and then I select continue. So again, you can understand how finite you can get this information. And there you go. There's a list of those people that fall into that search criteria. Very fast, very easy, and now that list is saved for us to reuse over and over again. Let's take it one step further. Look down in the lower right-hand corner. What can I do with this list from the same screen? Well, for our example today, we will say that we're going to mail merge a Word document to everyone on this list, and we're going to send out some collateral. So I select New Document, and it does Microsoft Word Mail Merge, and you've all seen that. So again, I can mail merge one document and fax it off, or 100 documents, 1,000 documents, and have them printed out directly from this page. I can create a task for my internal users to call or personally visit everybody on this list, or send them an email, or how about a fax, it's creating a task. I can do a mass email blast from this page. We can include and exclude all if I want to pick and choose who I'm going to send on this list information. The refresh button allows me to do just that. It will take that same search criteria because in a week, this list will be different. I refresh it, it adds the new people, it eliminates the old people that don't fall into the criteria. I don't have to run the list again. And I can even li export this list to a file if I use a fulfillment house or something like that. So as you can see, list management is not limited to marketing. If I'm a salesperson and I want to generate a list of all of my customers in Southern California and send them a thank you letter or send them an introduction letter or send them a white paper or send them a piece of promotional material, I can do so. So it very much applies to everyone. In the support department, if I want to generate a list of all my customers that have had a particular error or something like that, I can do so and send them a white paper. So here's our list saved, and you can see here trade show leads by state has been added. I'm going to go to the upper left-hand corner and select campaign list. Now I'm going to apply this list to a marketing activity. So I'm going to select time and expense marketing campaign. Now at IPEC CRM, we wanted to make marketing automation simple and straightforward, but effective. So we created a sort of a, a three-tier structure here. So on top, you see the big picture, time and expense marketing campaign, a starting, an ending date, a budget, an actual cost. Now, the actual cost is derived from the specific activities that we've performed on the right-hand side. But we put some structure in between that, what we call waves or phases of the overall campaign. So we're going to make our customers aware of our new time and expense software. We're going to do some trade show events, and we're going to do some industry advertising. So now I designed this for the webinar. You design that with your jargon and how you market to your clients. Okay. Before we drill down into these phases, I want to show you the tabs on the top. We store all of the communications, whether they're incoming or outgoing, related to this marketing campaign in a communications tab. And maybe more importantly, we provide a real-time report that gives marketing executives information on not only those communications, but all of the sales and the stage that the sales are at derived from this marketing campaign. So you have the ability in real time to understand that I have eight deals closed from this $12,700 marketing campaign. And I can easily generate a report or add a column to this page that says, oh, by the way, that is $37,000 worth of product sold. So true budget versus cost analysis on your marketing activities. Let's go back to the big picture campaign and drill down here a little bit. I'm actually going to drill down to the awareness phase of the campaign. So it also has a starting date, an ending date. The tab across the top, we store the communications at this level. And then a list of the specific activities that we're going to perform to make our customers aware in this particular phase. So mailer to target companies, follow-up mailers, we're going to do a press release, we're going to do a telemarketing verification. How about a yellow page ad? You get the point. Anything that you do to generate leads. By selecting a new wave activity button, that's how we create new wave activities. But I'm going to actually select one 
that I've already filled some details in on so I can show you how easy it is without having to retype everything for you here. So we created a name and we named it a LAMP promotion. We're going to do a follow-up call to everyone on that list that we just sent collateral to. Okay. So what I need to do is, is find that trade show leads by state list that we just created and attach it to this activity. I assign the starting and ending date, a budget and cost. We haven't made any calls yet, so we don't have a cost. And then we start into our scripting. What this does is this gives our inside sales rep, our outside sales rep, a little kickstart on to not only why they're calling, but who they're calling and what they should be saying. And I'll show you how that applies when I actually become the inside sales representative. How many calls do I want to make a day? Who on the left-hand side here are going to make those calls? And then what I think is probably the most important is creating a communication in each one of these customer files. So if I'm not mistaken, we had 17 people on that list. So as soon as we save this, within the communications of those 17 people is going to be this detail. Why is that important? Well, I make an outgoing call to one of these customers, and I leave them a voicemail, and they call me back and get on main switchboard and get transferred to somebody else in our organization. Now, whoever answers that telephone has to know why we called that customer, right? Otherwise, we're going to look terribly unprofessional. So Pierre No2 calls back and says, yeah, hi, somebody just left a voicemail for me. I'm not sure who it was. Um, do you know why they called? Right, yes, sir. It was a follow-up to our sample, uh, software and lamp extravaganza. We sent you a mailer last week. Did you get it? Opening up communications between sales, service, marketing, and even our finance department, everyone in our enterprise. Extremely important. Let's go save that. So in that short period of time, we've created a list. We've mail merged a, a, a document to those people. We haven't actually licked the envelopes and put the stamps on and sent them off yet, but you get the idea. We've also followed up with an outbound call. So let's change hats here, and let's make action of that outbound call. So I'm going to log in as an inside sales rep here, Peter Johnson. Now, you'll notice Peter prefers to log into his task list, not in the calendar format, but a list format. So Dave logged into his leads. Peter logs into his tasks in a list format. Okay. How is that made possible? Well, it's done through preferences, the tab in the upper right-hand corner. My preferences allows your users, individuals, to set up the system the way they prefer to work. Do they want to empty their recent list? How much information do they want on each page? Five pieces or 25 pieces? How do they prefer to log in to their calendar, their opportunities, or their support cases? How do they prefer to search? By company, by support case, by knowledge-based solution? Again, this is not administrators telling users how to set up the system. The user gets to set this page up themselves. Another example of that would be my dashboard, which I select on the left-hand side. My dashboard is just that. It's a dashboard of information that I choose to use as Peter Johnson. My high priority opportunities, my new leads, a chart with my opportunities by territory, my appointments, and my tasks. Now, how did I create that? Well, I'm going to scroll down here real quick and select my dashboard setup. Again, point and click. I don't want my leads on there twice, obviously, so I'm going to get rid of one of those. Let's put my high-priority cases on here, even though I'm not a technician, just to give you an idea of how easy it is. Put a couple over there. Point and click. Actpack CRM is 100% web-based. And what that means is, is that if I have Pocket PC on my handheld device, or I have access to the Internet on my handheld device and the Internet Explorer browser on it, I have full access to the system. I can even see my dashboard on my handheld device. So not only can I check appointments, contact information, company information, but I can actually drill down to knowledge-based solutions. 
I can look at support cases. I can progress opportunities through the sales cycle and more. So we'll save that. And you can see here, my high priority cases has been added and my leads has been removed. Very fast, very easy. Okay, wonderful. So if we go back up to the tabs here, I logged in as Peter, and Peter is going to start making some outbound calls. The first thing you notice is that lamp promotion that we created earlier. So I'm going to select that. Then we have a very easy to use screen. You can see I've already made three calls on previous activities for the lamp promotion. I've spent about seven minutes on those calls. How do I do that? I do that by simply selecting get a call. By selecting get a call, it takes that first person off the list and starts my scripting. Hello, am I speak to Red Barrel? Gives me information about the company we're calling, Design Right Incorporated. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, it's timing the amount of time I have on the call. A little bit of detail about the person we're calling. And again, very important, if Reg is not available, I know Arthur is also on our list from the company Design Right, so I can ask for Arthur. Intelligent information. Also notice across the top, I can look at a company summary, a person summary, create a new person if we get through to someone that's willing to talk to us. Quick look, which is a combination of support cases, opportunities, and communications for this company. Create a new lead, record a new opportunity, or create a new commu communication without leaving this page. Well, let's say um, we actually called Kieran O'Toole. That's our sample data we use today. And we got through to Kieran O'Toole, so I'm going to select Got Through. And my scripting goes further. Thank you for taking my call, Kieran. Do you have a moment to discuss our LAMP? and software extravaganza. The fields you see below are what we like to call key attributes or profiling, key attribute profiling. In order to shorten the sales cycle for our sales team and to better get them leads, I need to grab pertinent information about these clients to pre-qualify them. So we're not only following up on a marketing collateral piece we sent out, but we have the ability on the fly to capture pertinent information that applies to this marketing activity and what we're promoting in that sale. So you can see here, I'm basically asking the customer about their existing softwares. If I have a customer that's using Microsoft databases, I don't want to send them marketing collateral or give them a salesperson that only knows IBM databases. So again, you don't sell software or hardware necessarily, but it applies to your business. If your customer buys cherry wood tables, you don't want to send them pine chair information. Think out of the box a little bit. We capture that information. We finish the call. So you know what? We got through to Kieran. We spoke to Kieran for quite some time, but Kieran would not give us his credit card number. I think we got him interested but he didn't want to buy right away. So I'm going to change hats again now, and I'm going to actually become Kieran the customer. So I hang up with Peter, the telemarketer that just called me, and you know what? Peter really did get me interested. So I'm going to go up and look at the website at Panoply Technologies. I'm going to do some research on this free lamp offer. Select this hyperlink. And it's going to ask me for some information, of course. What's really nice about this software is that with Attack Serum Web Self Service, this is not a separate page created and synchronizing data to your CRM solution. What you're seeing me fill out right now on our web page is actually CRM Web Self Service fields that were created in the internal CRM. We're interested in the software, but we got to have that lamp. Okay. So now whether you're asking them to download something or give them more information, workflow kicks in as soon as that customer hits the save button on your website.
And that's critical to understand. Very important. It's built in. So let's go back to Peter Johnson, the inside sales rep. And note at the top of the screen a notification that we have a new lead. They're interested in the software, but they've got to have that lamp. So basically all of the details and information, as I select it, that the customer entered into the system was automatically captured in the internal CRM. No delays. And note, I was notified right away. So whether I'm in the field with my handheld device or in the main office as an inside sales rep or wherever I am, you get that notification. And taking that one step further, look what it did. It created a lead in our internal system. I can store notes. Communications. I have a tracking and audit trail for all of the processes that we'll walk through to qualify this lead. You can see those at the top in the tab. I also want to point out ACTRAC CRM deduplication is notifying us that, hey, wait a minute, we have a company called Eurolandia already in our system. You better double check and make sure it's not the same. Why is that? Well, because we don't want 20 different Yerlandias created as leads if they are, in fact, the same company. And you can see here with address and phone number, they are. So by pushing two buttons, I'm going to take that lead and populate it within a company that already exists in our database. And that's Dunnery. For the purpose of this demonstration, I am still Peter Johnson, and I've already contacted Kieran. So I noticed that, wow, Kieran hung up the phone, and he went right to the website. Now, you can go through a long or a short qualification process, as I'm sure you do. But for this example, we're going to convert this lead to an opportunity by pushing that button on the right-hand side. Because I already know that this is an opportunity to sell product. I'm going to make some changes to the description here. The source, website, type, do we know? Products and services, consulting. Now, again, every drop-down in this system is customizable to your needs, and we'll make those changes later. It time and date stamps when we converted it to an opportunity. Territory management could route this directly to a salesperson, but I'm going to walk you through the process here so you understand that there's two ways to do it. Also, tying marketing to sales. When we mail merged that document to the list and we sent that document out, we not only sent it out to the customers, but we we stored the LAMP promotion piece of collateral in the customer file. So when we contact the customer, we have access to it. Or when that customer contacts us and whoever in the enterprise picks up the phone and Karen says, oh, hi, I just got a great promotional piece in the mail, whoever answers the telephone goes to the company or the person and looks in their communications, launches the document, and reads it back to the customer verbatim. That's how we know how to attach marketing activities to sales opportunities. No administrative time. It's there for you. The stage is still a lead. Status is in progress. I'm a customer service rep. I don't deal with forecasting or certainty to close. I'm going to manually assign this to Susan May, even though, again, we can have territory management route it. And you know what? At Panoply Technologies, they teach us that everything needs to close by the end of the month. So you could easily have all of those fields pre-populated. If your sales cycle is that templatized, I don't imagine it is. You can add fields or remove fields to any of these screens. What have we done? We've created a unique opportunity called LAMP promotion in the system. It's up top. That is stored within the company or Landia. It's stored within the person, Kieran O'Toole. It's also stored within Susan Mays, the internal salesperson's list of opportunities, which we'll show you in a second. Within this opportunity, as the inside sales rep, I'm going to notify Susan to call this customer. So I'm going to select communications and create a task. Call customer ASAP was on the call list 
and then went right to the website. Very interesting. Set a reminder. I can set status level, priority. Again, territory management can route it. I can automatically create follow-up tasks or appointments by checking these boxes so I don't have to retype everything. I'm going to assign this to Susan. And I'll remove myself from this. And select Save. So that's task management. Task management, scheduling, all of that exists in CRM. My preference is that all of that is automated through workflow. And it can be. But I want to show you what can be. I want to show you you have options. So, time to change hats again. Susan Mays. Susan is our field sales rep. Susan's out in the field. She works from home. She works from a handheld device. She's out quite frequently, and that's where we want her, out selling. So you can see Susan logs into her what? Her list of sales opportunities by stage with details. If you see on the right-hand side, you can see a list of her opportunities, the forecasted amount, the weighted forecast, the average certainty to close. We just got the notification from Peter, again, whether I'm on my desktop or on my handheld, to alert me that we need to call this customer on the ramp promotion. The pipeline you see here actually allows me to filter out my sales. So if I just want to review the deals that are in the stage of proposal submitted, I select that on the pipeline, and it drills down to those three. It not only drills down to those three, but my sales statistics reflect only those three. I'll dismiss my notification here. Let's also go check out our leads. And there's our lamp promotion. So let's open up that opportunity and give Karen a call. The first thing I note is that ah, it's a valid phone number, it's a valid customer in the system, so I'm going to accept that lead. And this is where workflow starts in the lower right-hand corner. Why would I want to reject that lead? Well, you all know that customers come up and kick tires, and they type in ASDF, 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 whatever that is, and we want to filter those out. We want to clean those out. So we simply reject the lead, and it goes back to the marketing department and alerts them that, hey, this is no good. Look at the tabs of information that are available for us to use within the Opportunity Lamp Promotion. A list of inventory and opportunity items. That's for offline quoting. Notes, communications, document library for incoming or outgoing files, a tracking and audit trail. All available within this opportunity. But let's talk about workflow for a minute. Okay. We are now in the lower left-hand corner at the stage of lead. Workflow is very simply this, if-then statements. If our stage is lead, then what do we want to do for our salespeople to be successful? Well, on the right-hand side, we have some radio buttons for workflow. We want to qualify the lead. Do we want to submit a proposal right away? Do we want to reassign it because we're too busy right now? Well, let's qualify this lead. I have some mandatory fields that I need my salespeople to fill out. Now, again, you can add or subtract some fields in this system. So we contacted the customer, very interested, and they want an on-site demo. So now, again, as I walk through this, remember, we're progressing it through your sales cycle. I've designed this for this particular company, but we sit down and design your business processes into the system. So now on the left-hand side, we're at the stage of qualified. What can we do? We can submit a proposal. We can reassign. We can negotiate. We can do a demonstration. So I'm going to just select demonstration. Progress it to that next stage. And let's make some changes here. Okay. On-site went very well with client wants pricing information. Okay. Save that. So as you can see, we've progressed this through the system. 
Now, I think more importantly, if we go to the company Yerlandia, what we want to make sure is, is we want to make sure that this customer is, first of all, an AR customer already. They may not be. If we just got them through the trade show in the first time, we may need the ability to promote them to a back office customer. By selecting the Promote to Customer tab, we have the ability to convert non-AR customers to AR customers by simply entering in a customer number, their credit limit, and some terms information. So through security, you can only have your AR financial people doing this, but you're not cluttering your AR database with non-customers, and you don't have to have somebody manually type them in again into your accounting solution. This currently exists out of the box for ACPAC Pro Series and ACPAC Advantage Series. We promote that customer. We check that information. Let's go back to their opportunities and show you the two ways that you can provide that customer quotes. So I'm going to select the lamp promotion opportunity. And we've got a couple of ways to provide quotes. If I select the Opportunity Items tab, I have the ability to add inventory and opportunity items. And those prices could be pre-established in there to this list. So they're stored as a separate table in the CRM database. You can see our total quoted price in the lower left-hand corner. So why would we do that? Well, we would do that so you would have a list of inventory items to send a quote or to mail merge to your proposal templates offline or if you're non-integrated to the ACPAC Advantage Series. If you are integrated to the ACPAC Advantage Series, we've got the ACPAC Quote tab. What the ACPAC Quote tab allows me to do is it allows me to literally launch the entire order entry module for ACPAC Advantage Series within my Internet Explorer browser wherever I have a connection. So now I can enter a quote directly into the back office. I do not have to synchronize data. This happens in real time. I have 100% access, and you'll notice it populated customer number 333 populated your Lendia. It gave us a quote instead of an active order. I have full access to inventory items and inventory control. And in this case, remember, we're giving them a Howard's and Death Light. So all of those other vendors out there that claim to have integration to back office products cannot even compete with ACTAC CRM because they're synchronizing data. They're not literally giving you 100% of the functionality of the CRM solution. I'll close that quote. And look what's happened in the background. We're actually reading into that quote automatically in real time wherever we have an Internet Explorer browser. This is the quote we just created, quote number 19. So, Susan May entered that order or that quote from her field sales office or her home. And now the customer tries to call her back and can't get a hold of her. So calls the main office and gets a hold of Peter and says, hey, you know what? I can't live without those halogen death lights. Why don't you go ahead and process that order for me? So I'm going to search or I'm going to use my recent drop-down list and select your Landia. I'm going to go to the opportunities. I'm going to select that lamp promotion opportunity, and I'm going to review the quote with the customer to make sure that we're on the same page. The customer agrees, and I select one button, promote to order. What it's doing for me right now is it's converting this sales order in the back office, converting the quote, excuse me, to a sales order in the back office, which it has done so. Order number 81 has been created. It has not only converted the back office, so it's printing out my pick tickets in my warehouse, 
for my warehouse management solution to pick, pack, and ship our products. It's ready to be invoiced. All of that happens automatically in the back office. But it's also progressed our front office opportunity to the stage of sale agreed and status one. So if we go back to our original marketing example, we now know we've closed another product, sale agreed, because of that one marketing campaign in real time. So if I select the tracking and audit trail, we time and date stamp everything. Who is involved? Any changes they made to forecast, certainly to close, to notes. So we have a wonderful view of our sales cycle, how long we're taking at each stage of the sales cycle. Why are we spending 140 hours on average in the negotiating stage? Why are we constantly losing deals? One of the things that Peter probably would have done before he promoted that quote to an order was checked into your Landia's credit history by selecting the credit information tab. What this gives me is my ability to understand, do they have enough balance and credit limit? Are they currently on credit hold real time from the AR back office? Integration takes us a little bit further with ACPAC CRM. You not only saw me enter a quote, but how about the ability to review and enter AR invoices? Or orders, future orders, standing orders, quotes. How about AP invoices? ACPAC CRM provides you 100% of the functionality of accounts receivable, accounts payable, order entry modules through the CRM solution seamless to your users. Why is this important? It's important because when my financial people make changes or notes in the system, everyone in the enterprise has access to that information also. Before I go to place an order, I know if they have enough balance or credit or if they're on credit hold, creating customer loyalty and synergy. I'm also trained as a customer service rep to thank our customers when they buy products from us. So I'm going to go in to the person your, uh, at your Landia, Kieran O'Toole, the person that actually placed the order. And I'm going to select on Kieran's email address. And I'm going to select a template that we've created in the CRM solution that introduces our support department and thanks our customers for buying our products. Now, again, this can be an automatic trigger by workflow. It can automatically send out these emails, but I want to show you the email manager built into the system. And I can just send that directly from here. Okay. This will create a communication within Kieran's communications, you can see here. And we should see our welcome from Panoply tech support sent today at 11.03. Anyone in the enterprise can review that email if the customer calls in with questions. So let's change hats. Let's actually go in as the customer to Kieran O'Toole's inbox. Kieran has just received our email. We would like to thank you for your recent purchase of our time and expense software and hope you enjoy your free halogen desk lamp. With ACPAC CRM workflow, we could also automatically create a follow-up call a week later to make sure that Kieran did, in fact, get his product on time. But for this example, let's move into a support functionality. Let's say Kieran got the software, and he plugged that lamp in, and he loves that lamp. But he's having problems installing the software. So he can click the hyperlink we provided him, or... Enter in our support at panoplytech.com email address. Unable to install the software. Getting blue screen. Okay. And he can send that off to us. Back at ACPAC, or back at Panoply Technologies, we're going to actually log out and change hats as an inside customer support 
technician. Now, Kylie, you'll notice, prefers to log into his list of support cases right away. Not to his opportunities or support cases. This is what you see here. Not to the calendar, but right to his support cases. This is how he prefers to work. You'll also notice that he got a notification that the customer sent us an email to open a support case. The filter criteria works the same. So if I just want to look at the two support cases where I'm waiting for information back from the client, I can select that on the pipeline, and it just shows me those two support cases. If I just want to look at the ones that are in the stage of investigating, I can so select there. Now, you choose those stages. Those are workflow stages, just like opportunities that you design. You may have a different support I'd also like you to notice down the right-hand side these lights. And I'm not a very good support technician today because these are service level agreement status lights. And basically what they're telling me is that I have expired my service level. If a customer has been promised that we will resolve their issues in 24 hours, we have these lights trigger at a certain time frame that you design. So if I want it to go to red four hours before our agreement expires with this customer, I still set that up in the system. Amber means, hey, we're starting to get close to that red time. If I had a green one up here, that would mean we're fine. We're well within service level agreements. I'm going to go in and select this notification we got from the website. And again, it not only notified me, but it created a new support case in our internal CRM system up top, 5-10117, unable to install software. I can find that within your Lendia. I can find that within Cherno Tool. If I go back to the customer, our auto system should have sent the customer a case reference number. No administrative time or cost to us. The customer can also go to the website and review any support issues that are open and the stage they're at. The ID number and the ability to drill down on that information via the website to help themselves. They can also search our knowledge base via web self-service with Actax CRM. but back in Kylie's. Notice the tabs, notes, communications, document library, tracking audit trail, knowledge based solutions that are available again within this support case. ACPAC CRM workflow for Panoply Technology says that this support technician has to accept new support cases. Contact the customer is sending details in an email. We have an installation issue. Again, you set up these fields and drop downs as they apply to your business. Okay. So as I walk through this, I'm going to investigate the problem. I'm going to try and recreate the issue for the customer. So we recreated on Windows 98. We recommend Win 2000. Now, that's a very short example, but you get the idea. And I want to open your mind to what support means to all companies, even if you're not a technology company. If I'm a manufacturer and my customer, we build a beautiful cable for, and we send that cable out and they get it and there's a crack in one of the legs, I want to know that you're creating a case in your internal CRM system so that your company is proactive in rebuilding that table and getting it out to the customer right away, but also following up to call me and give me status. I don't want to have to call and follow up every time. Calling to make sure we're picking up that old table or whatever we do to support our customers. If I go to the San Francisco Giants baseball game out here in San Francisco and I sit in gum, I want them to create a support case in their internal system to make sure that my pants get dry cleaned or replaced. 
do not limit case management to technical support. So as you can see with that tax CRM, we've walked through from creating a marketing campaign and generating a list all the way through after sales support and care. What I would like to show you very quickly is some of the administrative functions within ACTAC CRM. We're just going to quickly add a field. We're going to change some drop down information. And the reason we're going to do that is that we want you to understand how quick and easy it is to do with ACTAC CRM. This is not going to be a nine month implementation. So the screen you see now is the company search screen. And we're going to make some changes to this just to show you how easy it is. First of all, we only deal with hotels. So I want this to be hotel name and not company name. We want you to use your own jargon. We deal with lots of contracts. And we use intermediaries, which I do have here already. But what I'll do is eliminate intermediary. We don't use them. And I'll add in another type of company there just to show you how easy it is to change drop-down list. I also notice I cannot search by state. So I want to add the state field. I'm also going to add another field brand new to the system, something that obviously wouldn't exist. We'll make something a little bit quirky. So I'm going to log off here and log in as the administrator. And I'm going to go down and select administration. I'm going to select customization from the drop down. But as you can see, there are many, many things that administrators can do to configure this system. Data upload utilities, different devices, the advanced email manager, key attributes, which we discussed earlier, the match rules or deduplication, etc. But today we're going to customize the company table of the database. And you can see here again, we have primary tables and we have all of the other tables in the system. You can customize anything practically in this system. So the first thing we wanted to do was change company name. So I'm going to select company name. This is a list of all of the fields that exist in the company table of the database. Company name, hotel name. Save. That's simple. We wanted to make some changes to a drop down list and the company type was what we chose. So I go over here to the right and select the selection drop down. We said we would remove intermediary. And I'm going to do something kind of crazy here so you know it's not vanilla. I'm just going to add something called a baseball team. It's my baseball fan, you can tell. Add, I'm going to move it up and save it. That easy to change any of the drop downs that exist in the system. Now I want to create a new field. I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner and create a new field. I'm going to choose what type of field I want it to be. And I'll leave this here for a second so you can review these, but the bottom line is I can do things as simple as simple dates, which launches the calendar, through intelligent drop-down selects, from plain text to business logic and stored procedures. But for this example, we'll do a drop-down. And we'll do the same baseball teams. So what am I doing? I'm naming the field and naming the caption that they will see. Is this a required field? Do I want to create a new lookup or use an existing lookup? Is it a read-only field so my salespeople cannot update, insert, or delete information? And I'll select Save. And what it does is it creates the field in the SQL database for me. I do that through the utilities in the system. So let's put some information into our drop-down here. And uh, the East Coasters, and of course, 
we cannot forget our Canadian friends. All right. And save. So, wow. Let's go back to that main page that we uh, first showed you, the Find Company screen. Well, we created fields, but we did neglect to do something. We neglected to put those fields on the screen. So let me, let me do that really quickly before I show you the main screen. So I'm going to select screens. Look at the other things you can customize here. Screens, lists, tabs. Blocks gives you access to other databases, ADO, ODBC compliant, compliant databases, or software. If you have an existing manufacturing software that you want to integrate to, ACPAC CRM gives you the open architecture to do it. Table scripts, adding new tables, SQL views. So let's select screens, and let's select the company search box. That was the one that we looked at first and customized. So what do we want to do? We want to go in and grab our baseball teams field, which was added. It's right here. So we're going to add that to the list. I can put that on a new line. We'll let that sit right there. And then we're going to go find address state, because I can't search by state. And we're going to add that to the list. And I'm going to put that on the same line as baseball teams. Update and save. We've also got a little feature called inline customization. So for those of you that are not so familiar as I am with the system, we just select that. Let's go back and look at the main page we first looked at. It now says hotel name. Type. Intermediary is gone. Baseball team has been added. Baseball teams are now here with our drop downs. And the state field you can search by. Let's actually see if I can search by MA, find, and there it is. When I selected the inline customization button at the end there, it added this hyperlink up top. Customize screen. So I don't have to go into admin. I can go right to the page, select the customized screen, and it'll launch the customizer right there in a separate screen for me. So I can, again, remove that state field and save, and it's automatically reflected in our system. Now, this is a web-based product, folks, and what that means is that you do all of your customizations on one single set of servers in one location, and everybody, remote offices, etc., get those changes immediately, as soon as they refresh their browser. I don't have to install software on 50 different machines. I don't have to customize 50 different machines. I don't have to upgrade 50 different machines. So the total cost of ownership over a 24-month period is drastically reduced with a web-based product. And one more thing before we let you go today. I want to show you how we designed the workflow very quickly. So I'm going to go to Administration, select Workflow, and I'm going to select the Opportunity Workflow that we walked through. This is our Workflow tree. I'm actually going to disable Workflow because I cannot customize it if it's enabled. And remember, workflow represents our if-then statements. So if you look across the top, these are those stages. Lead, qualified, quoted, negotiating, sold, closed, demo. Now, how do we create those states? Well, I select the new state button. So we use intermediaries to approve contracts. So that's a stage for us. Save that easy to create a new state, an intermediary, upper right-hand corner. Now, I talk about my if-then statements. If it's a lead, then what can you do with it? You qualify the lead, you submit a proposal, you reassign the lead, and I simply add intermediary by dragging and dropping it. So once you've designed your business processes, creating the workflow in ACPAC CRM is extremely straightforward. Now the big part. What are all of the actions that we want to occur 
so things don't fall through the cracks and we provide better customer service. We call those transition or escalation rules. So if I select the transition from lead to qualified, the qualify state, you can see here on the left-hand side are all the fields that I want to be viewed at that stage of qualified. I can have as many as I want there. What actions do I want to occur by certain fields being saved or changed in the CRM system? Let's walk through a couple examples. A customer goes up and fills out information on our website. We automatically create a new lead in the system. Great lead. We automatically alert and show notification to the salesperson that they have a new lead. We automatically send out an email back to the customer saying, thank you for visiting our website. Here's our contact information in case you would like to call us directly. Let's say an opportunity has progressed to the stage of sale agreed. Let's automatically merge a thank you letter and create a support case for our support team to contact the customer in five days or in two days to schedule the installation or the implementation of their products or services that they recently purchased. If a quote is entered into the system for more than $5,000, send an SMS message out or page the field salesperson or the CFO. I can even execute SQL statements and run stored procedures. So basically what this means is, is if I have to pull in data from other systems or have other systems trigger workflows or actions in the CRM system, I can so do it. ACPAC CRM is by far the most powerful integrated CRM solution for the mid-market available today. I do appreciate you taking the time today to watch the webinar. Any questions, please feel free to contact us at CRM 